guys, this is Tara with Kittens, Weights, and Tarot, and today I'm doing a review of the Lunar Nomad Oracle. And as you can see, this is a rather large deck as I hold the box in my hands, uh, but it says that it's 43 cards to unlock your creativity and awaken your intuition. So this is actually a uh, Lenormand deck, but Oracle sized. And it's got some extra cards because obviously it's 43 um, and not the normal amount of Lenormand cards. So uh, let's take a look at the box first. And this is by Shaheen Miro with a forward by Teresa Reed. And you got your book and your cards kind of in the sleeve here. Some people don't like that, but I just keep them here because the box is nice and hard and um, I think it protects them really well. Okay, and then onto the side here, if I don't just drop the cards out. And oh my gosh, who does this look like? This looks like our new little panther named Loki. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and pull out what's inside here. As you can see, there's just Okay, so we'll put this off to the side. Um, and then we have a guidebook. So we'll look at this first. And I, I love the, the layered art. I think it's so cool. Um, and that seems to be like, uh, there's quite a few decks right now that are that um, kind of um, clip art, layered art, uh, collage scrapbook uh, type of decoupage. I really like it. We have our table of contents, uh, how to become a lunar nomad. Um, so the oracle as a map for a journey, writing the story of your lunar path. That one I think is really interesting. Reading the story of one card, three cards, nine cards, uh, tips for making the most of your lunar journey and so on and so forth. Okay, so this kind of, uh, this forward goes into um, almost how, how the uh, Lunar Nomad came to be. Okay, glowing in the dark. So, introduction to the moon, actually. And the moon in each of us. This is actually a really good read. So, if you end up getting this, um, I would suggest uh, taking a look at um, the guidebook. Okay, the Lunar Self and the Solar Self. So. Uh, looking at the balance of the two uh, within um, each and every human being. And then there's how to use this particular oracle, but you know, everybody kind of does their own thing. Okay, and then we go into the meetings. Uh, so here we have the writer, you know, again, just like uh, your regular Lenormand. However, let me get past our regular Lenormand cards. Okay, so after number 36, okay, then we go into um, the extra cards and what they mean. So we have the aura, so energy, body, cords, healing, trust, mind, body, spirit, but it is an oracle, so you can also go off your intuition as well. So it's kind of kind of Lenormand, it's like loosely, I mean, it has the Lenormand cards, um, but you can also just read it as an oracle deck if you don't want to do Lenormand, because obviously it has these extra cards. So if you want to be a more uh, traditionalist uh, Lenormand reader, then you might want to take out the extra cards. I leave them in and I read it as if there are extra cards in my Lenormand deck. So I'll read it as Lenormand, but then I will go back and look at the keywords of these extra cards. So we have the bat, we have the umbrella, the familiar, which now looks like Loki. <laughs> And we have the seer. Okay, so it did say that there were uh, 43 cards, and I know it says there are 41 here, but that's because there is an extra um, man card and an extra woman card. So 42, 43. <laughs> okay, um, then how to become a lunar nomad? What does that mean? Uh, how can you use this for your journey? And then um, helping you to write the story of your life's path. It's it's really interesting. So those of you that are writers like to look into your shadow self like this. This is a good read. <laughs> I 
um, storytelling with nine cards and I've done all of these exercises and I love them and um, like you can keep going though I mean uh, it is so cool okay and then we have our author there with a ginormous what looks like Loki cat or panther we now have a panther and a puma okay so now let's look at the cards okay so they are large so some people mm, they're not really into it me I like ridiculously small and ridiculously large cards it just makes it more fun to work with um, but that's just me and I know that my taste isn't everybody's taste um, this box is really flimsy but you know I, I like that at least it's in here and it keeps it safe but yeah the box is leaves a lot to be desired in here okay so yeah just a nice squishy box okay um i'm gonna take a look at the two extra cards that i have put off to the side so there's this is your title card and here are the backings by the way so kind of that watercolor chalk and you see the moon here through this keyhole our intuition is the key unlocks at least that's how I see it um, okay so these are a couple of the extra cards so we have the man and we have an extra woman very very awesome I love everything that's going on in these cards you know and whatever man and woman you choose is obviously up to personal taste I like when there's extra cards to choose from like an extra child or you know extra man extra woman um, I got the Natalie Rose yeah Le Natalie Rose uh, winter solstice Lenormand and I like that there was like an extra like star and tree and child and woman like there was like three different childs and like I think a few different women <laughs> and it's like and there was so much to choose from and I like that that you can um, tailor that to your personal taste okay so I will say that uh, the cardstock leaves a lot to be desired um, it doesn't deter me from from using it like I still have fun because the images are awesome and it's ridiculously large um, but for some people that's um, I heard a lot of people complain that just they couldn't get over the cardstock and they couldn't get over the size you know and that's up to you um, for me it's okay I just have to be really careful when I shuffle um, and I'll show you guys how I shuffle so that I don't damage my cards because they're so flimsy um, so let's go ahead and turn them over and we'll just take a look at each and every one of these two extra cards off to the side okay so they're not in any particular order because um, it is a working deck and all that crunching and craziness you hear in the background is our new cat Loki who is a sweetie like you guys thought Wally was sweet which he is um, but Loki is like, he, I don't think he knows what it means to be aggressive. Uh, Wally doesn't really either, but Loki, <laughs> but Wally's, um, I mean, he'll hiss at Loki because he feels like there's an intruder in his house right now, but he's not really attacking or anything, which is good. And Loki like acts as if he's not being hissed at. It's really interesting. Um, I think that the the images and the cards are pretty clear um, you know there are some decks where it could be ambiguous like is this the anchor or is this the ship you know because they'll have an anchor coming off a ship um, but I feel these are clear I chose this one because um, kind of looks like an ex I have not that I still have the hots for my ex but it's just like I mean I, he was a good-looking guy <laughs> Brian's a good-looking guy I mean it's like I guess if you clean Brian up it would be Brian too um, the moon book the seer I love this one so 
like there's a lot going on, but you could figure out what it is. Sounds a little eerie. And they feel Victorian to me. I dig it. I dig it a lot. And we'll do um, three cards. I'll pull three cards at the end so you guys can kind of see like how I would read with it, especially with the oracle cards. You know, if we get any oracle cards in that. And here's the woman. She is just awesome. So I keep her in. Fish. Garden. Tower. Tree. And the mice. Those sneaky little mice. Okay. So when I shuffle these, some people will do a little side shuffle like this. Um, some people will pop shuffle like this, and I have done that as well. Um, but I actually like to not really ripple shuffle them, but I just let them fall, and they fall effortlessly, and I think that that's how best that I, I shuffle my larger decks, and it works for me. I just let them fall in a controlled manner. Oops. Unless I'm not paying attention like I was just doing. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm just going to be asking uh, anybody who's watching this video, what is something that we need to know right now for our highest good? Message for anybody watching this video. So some people may resonate with this. Some people may not. This is just kind of a sample reading. Let's see what we get. Okay. We got one. The seer. How did I know? I knew. Okay, and we have the shears, and we have the rings. So as you can see, these are large, and I need to make room for them. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the seer is, you know, intuition, kind of like the moon, you know, so like I said, you can pull some of the cards out if you wish, um, but I see that as like the moon slash the high priestess, like really having a handle on... Um, knowing your shit, <laughs> your, your, uh, how the world works, the, the light, the dark, the balance. Uh, but then we have the shears, which is, um, well, basically the scythe to cut away something. Uh, and then here we have the ring, which would be a commitment or contract. So, um, if I were to read this, you know, depending on what the question was, and for me, it was just like, what do we need to know right now for anybody who's watching this? Um, is to really look at what your gut is telling you. Um, despite what everybody else says is the right thing to do or um, the people that you love say is the right thing to do, um, you are your own best compass and you need to trust it um, so that you can cut away um, or cut off uh, a particular commitment that you currently have. Um, the commitment obviously is not serving whoever this person is, um, and you know this deep down, so best to cut it away. Very simple, straightforward, I love it. If you dug this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, don't forget to click subscribe, and don't forget to click that ding 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 notification bell for more videos just like this. And if you want to catch a reading with me, I do have Lenormand reading uh, on my website, www.kittensweightsandtarot.com, as well as many other readings, so it's just dependent on your taste. Um, and if you go to patreon.com slash kittensweightsandtarot, I am actually working on my own oracle deck, um, and I would like to have that finished possibly by the end of this year. Um, but I do need support and help in order to get it off the ground because, you know, the trials and tribulations of an indie deck creator. <laughs> Um, also, uh, if you want to see more um, projects such as like my five elements meetup that we just had that was awesome, uh, then, you know, join, put in your input, uh, plus you get lots of freebies in the process. I mean, how can you beat that? Um, and also, Simon over at the Hermit's Cave uh, invited me to join the 15 other um, YouTube channel peeps uh, for the 24-hour tarot -thon. So. 
go on over to my Facebook page or my Instagram, or heck, go over to Simon of the Hermit's Cave. He has all the information about that. Um, I will, my 90 minute slot is at 11.30 p.m. Uh, UK time, but that is 3.30 p.m. Uh, San Diego time, that's West Coast, United States, Pacific Standard Time uh, on July 29th. All right, so I will catch you spiritual homies later. All right, peace, love, and chicken grease. Peace out!